Enzalutamide is also being studied intently in M0, M0 CRPC. And the trial that is recently completed is called the PROSPER trial. And that's a large phase three randomized trial looking at men with this non-metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer, randing, randomizing those men two to one to the oral antiandrogen enzalutamide versus placebo. We don't know the official results of the trial, but in mid-September of 2017, Pfizer, which now owns the rights to the drug, reported a press release saying that enzalutamide met the criteria for success and they would be submitting an application to the FDA for expansion of the label. Remember, enzalutamide has been FDA approved for a number of years to treat metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer, but the label does not, current label does not include M0, M0 CRPC. Whether, what I don't know is this, will the FDA act more quickly on this request for label expansion and open the doors to using it in M0 prostate cancer fairly soon. Again, as of late 2017, as we're talking now, enzalutamide is not yet FDA approved for M0, M0 CRPC. Enzalutamide is a FDA approved uh, orally available therapy uh, that has been uh, approved in two contexts in metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. One is in patients with uh, metastatic disease that has progressed after docetaxel chemotherapy, and in the other setting it's approved in patients who have uh, asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic metastatic castration resistant disease. In, both, in studies in both of those contexts, enzalutamide demonstrated a significant improvement in um, progression-free survival compared to a placebo. Uh, it also uh, demonstrated a significant improvement uh, uh, compared to placebo in overall survival. Uh, it's a well-tolerated, orally available therapy. Uh, many patients are able to take it uh, without significant uh, problems uh, for months or even years. Um, as, uh, as, has, as we've been able to give more and more of it, there have been a few toxicities that have emerged that are of concern. Uh, one is um, some cognitive changes that can occur in patients fatigue and even falls have been, uh, have been reported uh, related to this drug. Uh, so that is something that's being explored, probably affecting a subset of the patients. Uh, my own personal feeling is that this might be uh, m more of an effect on elderly patients as opposed to younger patients.